Well, it's time for your questions and some honest answers. Here's an interesting one from Deborah. She says, I recently became involved with a man I've known since childhood. He's still legally married, but has lived in a different state from his wife for the last seven years, although he takes care of her financially. They have no involvement physically. I didn't expect to feel this way about him, and in my heart I feel it's wrong, but I'm so torn over whether to leave the situation or stay. We are not living together and have no plans to, but we are intimate. What does the Lord say about this? <laughs> well, I think intimate means you're having sex together. You're not living together, but you do have sex together. And he's a married man, and you are not married to him. Uh, so what the Bible says is gee, that's called adultery. And uh, it's one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. So what does the Lord say? I know you'd like me to say it's okay, don't worry about it, but I can't say that because the Bible says it's adultery and it's wrong. Now, I'm sorry, I mean, you're attracted, you're, I don't know why this man is living in a different town than his wife, I don't know any of these situations, but the fact they're not living together, it does not give you license to go after him, okay? And she's really selling herself short, isn't she? And she's not understanding her own value. You know, you of deserve to date someone who's well, officially you, available. Available and, and honest and mm -hmm. truthful. Okay. All right. Linda says, is there anything else that needs to be fulfilled in the Bible regarding the second coming of Christ, such as the Bible being preached throughout the whole world? Has this been accomplished? Uh, frankly, I think it has. Um, there's some who think, well, I don't know what else there is to do. Uh, there may be some tribe out someplace that hadn't heard, but really the gospel has gone all over the world. We at CBN are seeing millions and millions of people come to Jesus. Uh, I don't know how much longer it's going to be, but in my opinion, my, my opinion, and that's what you're asking for, uh, about everything has been fulfilled for the Lord to come back. Mm -hmm. How soon it's going to be, I don't know. We don't know the day or the hour. We can't tell. But nevertheless, we can say, even come, Lord Jesus. Uh, but uh, it could happen tomorrow. I, I really believe Amen. It. And, the, and, of course, the uh, computer age has helped with that because, you know, yeah. uh, you can literally spread the gospel well, all over the world. There's some that think, well, they've got to rebuild the temple and they've got to have all that set up. I don't think that necessarily is the precondition for the Lord coming. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness, and then shall the end come. Okay. Amen. Cindy says, I've been in Christ for over 40 years now. My grown children, whom I all homeschooled through the eighth grade, have rejected the Bible as being God's word to us. They are all intelligent and hardworking, but God is not in the equation for them. I constantly fight for them on my knees, but I'm hoping you will recommend some reading material and or advice that would speak to the authenticity and reliability of the scriptures so I can help them. Um, I, I wrote a book uh, called The Secret Kingdom that has been probably the most important book I, I ever wrote. I think I had a, an insight from the Lord. I recommend that to them because it lays out very clearly uh, s principles in the Bible that are self-vindicating, uh, self-validating. And I think that's what your children need to see. You see, the principles that I've got in that book, The Secret Kingdom, came out of the words of Jesus. And they apply in every situation that you can conceive of. And if they're intelligent and can read that carefully, they will see that the words of the Lord are like the law of gravity. They, they, they affect everybody. And uh, it'll, it'll make a difference, okay? Here's one from Kayla. She says, my significant other passed away on October 25th, and our five-year-old daughter says she saw her dad when we were in the grocery store, but I didn't see anything. Then my friend spent the night last night, and she said she woke up and saw him standing in my living room. My question is, is there such a thing as this? Are there good spirits or bad spirits, and what do they do? Uh, they're so-called familiar spirits, and they're demonic. Um, I don't think you're seeing your traditional, although it's not, not husband. Significant other, so we don't know. No, well, it's, we do know if it had been husband, they would have said husband. Right. All right, so she was living with somebody that was The father her of her daughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of those relationships. I don't, I don't think you're seeing him. I think uh, that that is a so-called familiar spirit. And uh, I think it's demonic. So you ask me what it is, that's what I, my opinion is. 
All right. I think God can sometimes give you dreams where you, you wake up and you feel like maybe the Lord lets you see some yeah, something, yeah, um, but, but not, not, not in the, in the not room. Not spirit standing in your living room. No, right. exactly. All right, Douglas says, has there ever been a time in history when God's will has not been done? Uh, I think almost all time of history, God's will has not been done. Uh, you know, you ask, is there a time? I don't know of any time you go back in the Bible, you look at Israel, they went into apostasy. Uh, the church has gone into apostasy. Uh, the Western nations have gone into apostasy. Uh, at what time do we live when they haven't? I don't know that there is such a time.